Will you be in Provincetown or will you go somewhere else? So, so that kind of bring it full circle. I don't think I'm in Provincetown anymore because yeah. I don't think that financially. Um, it sounds really expensive. I mean, yeah. that's, I think it's outrageous. And yeah. it's and it's seasonal too, so it's like that's the other thing. Yeah, is that if you don't make. All your money <laughs> in two months <laughs> in of the year. In three months, yeah. Or, yeah. yeah and essentially, it's I mean, you have it's like two and change. Season, but if you're spending ten grand a month and you can't even get thirty seats in your space, what do you think? I've never faced public with pro. We didn't even have hot water. I did what? dishes with my espresso machine. What? We wow. barely passed our hot Ten stuff. grand a month, no seats, and no hot water. Yeah, I mean, it's, you're supposed to have hot water, but. Uh, the landlord is just such a greedy asshole. Yeah. And that I'll say probably. Some, no, sometimes. I mean, if I was a jerk. Most sometimes of them you, are. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you deal with that. I mean, more often than not, I think tenants deal with that. Like, that's the situation. That's the landscape. Surprisingly, I mean, I met him for the first time. Came to the shop about a month after I was open. On a busy Friday afternoon, I had a wine at the, uh, the espresso bar. And um, I think I might have been short staffed, so I was making espresso with a couple of these stuff. And this guy comes in with a cup to the front of the line. He's like, well, is this the manager here? And I'm just like, oh, God, here we go. Mm. Oh, I'm the manager. I didn't expect to have to have you. Oh, is the owner here? Oh, my God. Are you kidding me. I was like, still me. Still me. Yep. <laughs> How can I help you? And he's like, oh, I'm the landlord. And he, he takes me away from my business. Yeah, totally. This particular afternoon, he sort of chastised me for not having a, um, a bar clerk out front. And in Provincetown, when you walk down or down Commercial Street, a lot of the more established touristy restaurants will have somebody standing out front with the menu. Mm -hmm. And the bar can't be going the street you're trying to get them to come inside. I didn't know that that was the term for them, and yeah. I'm just so happy it is because it's annoying. A barker. So it's annoying. so annoying. And wow, I didn't know that was a thing street, either. I cross the street. It's not the experience I'm looking no. for. And why would he expect that from you? Or, or right. demand it? That's that's like part of the culture down there for these tourist restaurants, and that's how they make money is to station somebody out there to kind of aggressively go after business. And as a, as a someone wanting to have a destination location, I was just in the wrong place, and it wasn't the right space. And so, had I had more time to think about it before I delved into that space, mm -hmm. I probably would have decided against it in the long run, but because it was a sublet and I knew that there was an out, that yeah. way, so what's the worst thing from happening? Right. Flush $50,000 down the toilet, but come away with a prototype and an experience of, of like so much experience. The future? How are we not going to run this in the future? Mm -hmm. What works in this space? What doesn't work in this space? What, as just a person, not a business owner, but like a person has to be here every day. Right. How does this feel? Mm -hmm. Do I like what I'm doing? Do I like this location? Do I like the people that are coming to my shop? Are they making me feel fulfilled? And at the end of the day, I love the community and I loved being able to have this sort of subversive yet also luxury brand exist in a community that is totally secular. But when push comes to shove, if you can't afford to be there and you're a business, there's no business here. Mm -hmm. And so... Where will you go? Where do you want to go? So so we bought a condo in uh, Union Square in Canada. And um, now I'm back in the city. I'm tied down to the city. Mind you, I was clueless when I was in Provincetown. The first few months, we lived in a tent. What? Where? Last, Where was this tent? In, in Provincetown. Renting the tent space for me and two other men. Like camping? Shop. Camping. Okay. We camped. And this is not glamping. No. This was like straight up camping. Like we did not have electricity or water at our tent site. Because every penny went into that. And so wow. not only was that challenging for me, but it was extremely challenging for the people who came to work for me or willing, at least in the beginning, to live through that. And I would also know in fairness is that not everybody is as tough as the other is out there. No. Facts. And also mm -hmm. not everybody is... You're back of the record. You gotta back, you gotta bet on yourself there. You yeah. gotta be really, mm -hmm. really tough and have a really thick skin mm -hmm. to be in the business, even if you have millions to start. Mm -hmm. But then to be passionate enough about your business where you're willing to live in tents with no power mm -hmm. in a community that has no housing for staff. It's a massive crisis down there. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so interesting. And I was yeah. not the only business owner living with me. At the end of the summer, when some of my staff left, they were up, burned out. Like they I think we've got like the headline of like, you know, the, the intro here. <laughs> wow. I moved back into my shop, which I totally wasn't supposed to do. Uh, and I was left with the following. In the papers. office? Um, on a beach here in between two ice cream freezers. The office was a little too exposed <laughs> to the outside, and I wanted it to be like really under the radar and private. And, you know, I was kind of breaking the rules a little bit. Yeah. And so I had a huge chair with a feather bed on top of it and like some fancy thousand and thread count sheets to make myself kind of feel like. Like it wasn't a beach chair in between like two it, freezers. Yeah, but wow. it was. And we looking back.